fundamentals those basics that build the foundation for accomplishment, productivity, success, and lifestyle. Fundamentals form the beginning, the basis, the reality from which everything else flows. And remember, there are no new fundamentals. Fundamentals are old, well established. Beware of someone who claims to have a new fundamental. That's like someone who claims to manufacture antiques. We would have to be suspicious, right? So fundamentals, basics, they are so very important to understand and consider and practice if you wish for the good life. And may I add here, make sure you don't go looking for the exotic answers to success. Success is a very basic process. It doesn't fall out of the sky. It doesn't have any mysteries, nor does it fall into the realm of the miraculous. Success is merely a natural result that comes from the consistent operation of the practical fundamentals. As someone wisely remarked, to be successful you don't have to do extraordinary things. Just do ordinary things extraordinarily well. Mr. Schoff, my teacher gave me many great phrases I'll always remember. One of them was, there are always about a half dozen things that make 80% of the difference. What a key thought, a half dozen things. Whether we are working on our health, wealth, personal goals, or professional enterprise, the difference between our ultimate success or inevitable failure lies in the degree to which we are willing to seek out, study, and to go to work on those half dozen things. For a farmer to reap a plentiful harvest in the fall, for example, the major basics are fairly obvious. Soil, seed, water, sunshine, nourishment, and care. Each fundamental being equally in need of study and attention or together they bring about the best chance for a successful harvest. A good question to ask before undertaking any project or setting any new objective then is what are the most important half dozen things that will make the major difference in how it works out. So whether the enterprise is art or architecture, music or sculpture, mathematics or sports, business or farming, success or lifestyle, it's the fundamentals that count. To understand them and to practice them is to take the first intelligent step toward accomplishing your objectives and living your dreams. The second key word for us to consider is wealth. Wealth is a word that brings about a wide variety of mental images. And that is part of my purpose in these cassettes, to provoke that wide variety of mental images. For that is where the dreams are, that is where the inspiration comes from, and that is where true incentive is born. The mystery and mixture of mental image, the stuff and the staff of life. Its right use, its constant use is the way to a life unique and a life abundant. Now to one, wealth means having enough financial substance to be able to do whatever you wish to do with your life. To another, it may mean freedom from debt, freedom from the constant claim of obligation. To yet another, it means opportunity. And to many, wealth means a million dollars. That's a unique word, millionaire. It rings of success, freedom, power, influence, pleasure, possibility, benevolence, and excitement. Not a bad mental image. Now we could talk of the wealth of experience, the wealth of friends, the wealth of love, the wealth of family, the wealth of culture. Wealth of many kinds. However, in this program, we are more specifically going to talk about wealth in the sense of financial freedom. 
wealth that comes from the conversion of effort and enterprise into currency and equity. For each of us, the amount of money required to be wealthy will differ. But the dream for all of us, I'm sure, is the same. Freedom from financial pressure. More freedom of choice, freedom to enjoy, and the opportunity to create and to share. Wealth, the possession of great financial resources that improves the quality of your life and gives you added dignity and expanded lifestyle. So decide for yourself what wealth means to you. Latch on to your own mental image of wealth. And let's see if the ideas I'm about to bring to you will make sense. And perhaps provide you with the inspiration to put the plan into high action. So that as the days pass, you will discover a growing sense of freedom and dignity, self-worth, substance, and lifestyle. The next key word is happiness, the universal quest. Happiness is a joy that most often comes as a result of positive activity. Like wealth, it too has a wide variety of meanings and interpretations. Happiness is both the joy of discovery and the joy of knowing. It is a result of an awareness of the full range of life, the color, the sound, the harmony. And it is the joy that comes from designing a life and practicing the fine art of living well. Happiness is being able to explore the offerings of life by perception, response, and enjoyment. Happiness is both receiving and sharing, reaping and bestowing. It is being able to feast on harmony as well as food, on ideas as well as bread. Happiness is the deliberate act to create a wider world of experience and awareness. Happiness is having a handle on disappointment. It is being in control of both emotion and circumstance. Happiness is freedom from the negative children of fear, such as worry, low self-esteem, envy, greed, anger, resentment, and so on. Happiness is an awareness and a grasp of the positive power of life and loving values. It is an order of thought, activity, and lifestyle. Happiness is values in balance. It is contact with people of substance. Happiness is contentment with the tasks of your life. It is thought inspired by, organized with, and rooted in your personal philosophy. Happiness is a life well lived, in which a wide variety of experiences are deliberately captured to become an invaluable form of currency for you to spend and invest in your own better future. Happiness is activity with purpose. It's love and practice. Happiness is both a grasp of the obvious as well as an awe of the mysterious. But for most people around us, happiness seems to be either something left behind or something yet to be discovered. Like all the good things in life, happiness is elusive by nature, but not impossible to capture. A major key for bringing joy into our lives lies in the next word we shall briefly examine. Discipline. If there is a magic word that stands out above all the rest, this is the one. Discipline. And in this program, you'll discover how positive this word is. Discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment. The bridge between inspiration and value achievement. The bridge between necessity and productivity. Remember, all good things are upstream. The passing of time takes us adrifting. And drifting only brings us the negative, the disastrous, the disappointment and the failure. Failure is not a cataclysmic event. It is not generally the result of one major incident, but rather a long list of accumulated little failings. Failing in life is failing to think today, failing to act today, 
failing to care, to strive, to climb, to learn, to keep trying day by day. If your goal requires that you write 10 letters today and you write only three, you are down seven letters. If you want to make five calls and you only make one, you are down four on calls. If your plan calls for saving $10 today and you save none, you're down $10 today. Now the danger is looking at an undisciplined day and concluding that no great harm has been done. It doesn't seem like such a bad day. But add up these days to make a year, and then add up those years to make a lifetime. And perhaps you can now see how repeating today's small failures can easily turn your life into a major disaster. Success, on the other hand, is just the same process in reverse. If you plan to make 10 calls and you end the day making 15, now you're up five calls. If you then get up a few on letters, move up the savings numbers, you can see what a massive difference it could make in a year and what wealth and accomplishment awaits for a lifetime. Discipline is like a set of magic keys that unlocks all the doors of wealth, happiness, sophistication, culture, high self-esteem, pride, joy, accomplishment, satisfaction, and success. The first key to discipline is awareness of the need for and the value of discipline, and especially the discipline to make the changes. What will it take? What must I do and what must I become to get all I want from my life?